Hey folks, I got to tell you, I am incredibly excited. And if, if you can tell by my background, you can see I am back in the lab. I got my studio back up. I got my lighting right. I got everything exactly the way that I want it. I'm comfortable and I'm just incredibly excited. So I'm, if, if my excitement is too much for you, I apologize in advance, but it feels good. I'm no longer sitting at a dining room table, fidgeting with the lights, trying to manage the sound. I have everything I need right in front of me. I have my piano right here. I have my turntables there. I have my lights here. I've got my camera here. And I've got all of you with me. So, you know, they say that you could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with me. And while I appreciate that, I'm just incredibly happy to be talking to you back in my in my happy place. This this is this is my happy place. And so I, I thought that, you know, since I'm in my happy place and it was it was a some work to get back to my happy place. And again, I could show you some pictures. If you'd like to see them, uh, let me know in the comments of, of what happened when everything fell down. But And I'll, I'll show you when it fell down and when it came back up. And it's just, it's an incredibly comfortable, comfortable space. And so, uh, but it's, it's, it's much like what we're going to talk about today. Um, we talked uh, uh, in the past about growing up in, in less than perfect circumstances. I, growing up in the hood, you you... You start at point A, and then retiring at 51, you get to play point Z, and it's it's great. I, I, I feel incredibly fortunate. I'm happy to be here, and I would never ask for anything to be different because, again, I believe that everything that's ever happened has created this moment, and, the, and everything we do in this moment will impact everything that ever happens in the future moments for everything that ever happens in the world. Kind of a big thought, but that's that's where I go. And but you know, it's it's an emotional journey getting to this place. You know, when you start to start to make those moves. And so sometimes those of us that start in in, in those circumstances, sometimes we're not afraid of uh, failing. We're afraid of success. You know, I think there's a poem and it says that a man's greatest fear is not that he's inadequate, but that he's powerful beyond measure. And so when you start to manage and you start to reconcile uh, your your personal power with your actual actions and the success, it's daunting. And so I, I want to I want to help prepare you because I believe that every one of you out there is going to find some success. And there's all kinds of different types of success. Success means different things for different people. Sometimes success is raising your kids. Sometimes success is getting a big house. Sometimes it's getting a job. Sometimes it's moving out of the hood. Sometimes it's just having money in your bank account. Sometimes it's retiring at 51. But whatever success is, there's there's it's always an emotional journey because there's always sacrifices that you have to take along the way. And I certainly made a whole host of uh, sacrifices. And uh, But today what I want to talk really primarily about is my emotional journey that took me from being a guy that wasn't incredibly academic, didn't know what I was going to do, wasn't incredibly talented, to retiring at 51, because in my mind, that's success. The fact that I can do what I want to do when I want to do it or nothing at all, that's success. That to, The fact that I could do something and not worry about if I make this person angry, they may impact my ability to get a job, that's success. The fact that I don't have to worry about what other people think and, and not have it impact my, my, my ability to make food to feed my family or to make money to buy food to feed my family. That's success. I just, I just like, to me, success equals freedom. And the fact that I have that freedom, uh, you know, I'm successful. And so, but I want to walk you through that journey because, again, there's a lot of steps that went into that. And, you know, it's, it's not all roses and buttercups, or it's not always the fairy tale that it's made out to be. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, that journey. And, and I want to approach it just because I've, I've been reflecting a lot just in, in terms of people that I know, people that I've experienced, you know, through the years. Uh, because it's as, I, as, as, you start to, as you start to become more successful, Largely, that comes from having exposure to things broader than what maybe you had, because I think the only thing that uh, holds people back in a lot of cases is the access to information and the ability to use, uh, not use, but the ability to process 
and operationalize, I like to say, that information. Um, and I, I, there are some real factors out there. I mean, I think there are some, some serious societal factors that are working against us. Uh, but sometimes we make the, we're able to make the sacrifices and overcome those things. So I, I'm not saying this is Dr. X's magic elixir. Never have. Never said that I had all the answers and never purported that on any of the videos. But what happens is as you gain more access to more information, you get more exposure to different things, you start to relate to different sets of information. You relate to different people because your, your peer groups change. Um, you relate to a lifestyle that's different. I, uh, you know, my wife and I today went to a, I went to the doctor and we went to an urgent care and this urgent care also serves, uh, is a primary, um, uh, conduit for, uh, folks that are on, uh, Medi-Cal government assistance. And so, you know, so I'm in, the, I'm in the waiting room and I realized as I looked around that my, you know, there was a time when that was how things were. I'd go into a waiting room and it was just a bunch of folks. But I went in today and I realized, you know, my life is different than these folks' lives. And and the things that they go home and that they have to worry about in some cases, they're different than what I have to worry about. Um, what they're going to do for the rest of the day is going to be different than what I do for the rest of the day. The fact is a lot of folks are going back to work. Some people are getting urinalysis for a job. You know, there's, there's all of these different things that come in. And so, and you start, so I start, you know, you start, I realize that I relate to my new reality more than I relate to my old reality. And I, you know, and I look at, uh, I look at some of the friends that I had over the course of time. And, you know, there's people that as I grew, they started to resent the changes that I made uh, because they, they felt like they were being left behind. Um, but, you know, and, 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 you know, internally, it's not as relatable as as uh my 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 as my old reality it's it's it feels good i'm able to do some cool stuff i'm able to buy some cool things and go some cool places and have a youtube channel and, and dedicate my time to that uh but it's not as relatable in some regards as to what i grew up with and i think we always go back to where we where our roots are because that's where we feel the most comfortable so you sit kind of in this in this kind of middle ground is purgatory, if you will. And sometimes you can feel isolated because, um, you know, I have a friend of mine that I, I spend a lot of time with and we get into these conversations about um, just different things. And he was a professional baseball player uh, and retired baseball player. And the conversations that we have, one of the things we talk about when we talk about money and we talk about investing, he talks about his business ventures and the things that he's buying and the things that he's doing. And we realize that not a lot of people can, not as many people relate to that as relate to some of the other stuff. And there's, there's people that they relate to you because of those experiences. You know, I had a friend of mine one time, a really good friend of mine that um, we, we he took a job at my at my work location uh, when I was working. And so I had to create some professional distance because I was on the senior leadership team and he was in, uh, in one of the hourly positions. And so I wanted to make sure that to protect him, that I didn't get him in a situation where people may try to use him to try to get information about me or to try to leverage something about me, to try to uh, create a... I don't know, unfair advantage in some type of negotiation, so on and so forth. And so I mentioned that to him. And the first thing he said to me is like, you know, you're not, the, it's not like you're the president. And it just, it, it made me realize that things change in life and, and we don't, and, and the people that have the most power or the people that have the ability or the latitude or the capacity or the capability to uh, make a, uh, to say it's all good. That they're usually the ones that are affected the least because they're on the positive side of it. And so making more money is great for the person that's making more money, but not necessarily as good for the person that's making less money because in some, re in some ways it may have inhibited that person's ability to get to, to where it is that they want to be. So it's, it's just, it's, it's complicated. And so, you know, I want to talk about a few things, a few specific difficulties that, um, you know, came with success and, and hopefully help you 
uh, prepare uh, for what you may encounter. And again, this isn't an exhaustive list, but this is just a few things because I was I was thinking about it. I was I've been thinking about how do we help each other uh, get to that place? Because you know, there's a lot of information out there. Again, we go to YouTube, but if I'm if but there's not a lot of people that are talking to young black men about what success looks like. There's not a lot of people talking to young men in general about uh, emotions. There's not a lot of people that are speaking about why inclusion is important. They talk about inclusion is important, but they don't talk about why. Um, you know, and so so part of what I want to be able to do is start engaging in the conversations that are different than the conversations we hear everywhere else. Oh, you can do it. Yes, you can. I believe in you. Diversity is good. I want to talk about some of those underlying things. And so today I'm going to talk about some of those underlying things. And so um, on that note, I think we're going to we're going to we're just going to get into it. So the first one is, is as you start to become successful, you start to carry a heavier weight of expectations. Um, you know, there's 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 this pressure, this crazy pressure to kind of keep going. You know, it's it's interesting because as you start to grow, as you start to develop, as you start to gain more exposure, the thing you never want to do is you never want to move backwards. And so you never want to slip back into a place of, of scarcity. I, I, I just, I, I always think about, I don't want to go broke. And my wife tells me, I said, you know, I don't want to buy this thing because I don't want to spend the money because I don't want to accidentally fall back. And she tells me we're not going to fall back and, and we're okay. But there's a constant fear and it's always sitting in the back of my head. And it's, it's a little bit of a weight that's on my shoulders. And I, you know, and, and, and when you when you come from that place of, of scarcity, you sometimes feel like you have to to prove yourself to people to that, that you belong in that place. Um, you know, your family, your friends. Uh, it's funny because I, I think I mentioned to you that I retired as the chief human resources officer. Well, when I was when I decided to go into human resources, actually, when I was in college and I was looking at careers that allowed you to do, allowed me to deal with people my father told me that companies only hire hr people internally and that they would never hire me i would never get hired as an hr person he told me that and so you know it was a constant battle of trying to prove that i was going to make it constantly trying to prove that i was adequate constantly trying to prove that I was doing the right thing. And eventually, unfortunately, he passed away. And I think it was 2017, but I was able to retire. He did. He was never able to see me at the point where I retired at the apex of the of the field, which is chief human resources officer. Uh, but you're always I was always proving myself to people. And there were times when I was burning myself out. Uh, there was a point where I was the director of learning and development. So I was responsible for de providing 40 weeks of training to the United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico, 30 of the 50 states. And I was just, and I had regional human resources responsibility for the West Coast. So I was doing all of this because I told myself that once I got it, I was going to keep it, but I was burning at both ends. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. There was a there was a time where I had gone out of town with my family. So my ex-wife had family out in Philadelphia. So we flew to Philadelphia to um, go to hang out with her family. I had a meeting, let's say on Monday at eight o'clock, or uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday at ten o'clock in the morning. So what we did is I and it was in Ohio. So instead of flying from Philadelphia to Ohio, what I did was because I wanted to make sure my family got home safe and sound, and I knew that was going to happen if I was with them, we flew from Philadelphia all the way to San Francisco. I took them home, got them all settled, and that evening, I took a red eye from San Francisco to Columbus, Ohio so I could make it to that meeting 
at 10 o'clock. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that my family was okay because family is always number one. But I also wanted to make sure that I was at the meeting. I didn't want to miss the meeting. I didn't want to get the reputation of that guy that missed the meeting. And it's and it wasn't an expectation that others had. It was an expectation that I had on myself. So I, could, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, the other day, and one of the things I mentioned to him is that in my mind, I'm wired in such a way that I have to strive for excellence in everything that I do. And I do that because I don't want to fail because there are other people that rely on me. And even when I was growing up, I didn't want to not meet the goals that I was trying to meet, whether it was going to school, whether it was getting a job, whether whatever the goal was, I did not want to uh, not meet that. And so, but what happens is over time is you get burnt out. And so you become cynical, you become tired, you become aggravated. And so there's a whole host of people that, uh, and I know you don't see it because you're seeing the best of me right now. There are a whole host of people that over time would tell you that you know, Sabado is a he's cynical. Sabado is has a short fuse. Uh, Sabado is impatient because in order to get a lot done, I had to be efficient. So things had to be on a time frame. And it was all because I wanted to maintain the success that I was having incrementally over time. But I, I learned and, and, and I share this with you is that it's OK to slow down. You, it should be about finding balance. As I as I got older and I started to really process this information, I realized that it's about finding the balance and not pushing myself to the brink. Because if I go back to the conversation that I had and I talk about it in an earlier video with the with the homeless individual John that I met in college, don't that told me don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, that ended up having a nervous breakdown. I I could have ended up like him. Now I was, I had the strength, I had the resolve, and I was able to get past it. But still, it was a I was I was going hard to the paint, as they say. So always make sure that you maintain the balance. Another thing that comes up is what's called imposter syndrome. You know, when you when you grow up in the hood, all you know is the hood, and as you start to evolve, sometimes it's easy to get into the idea that, you know, I don't deserve this or that I'm, I'm lucky because these things happen or because I'm, or that, that I'm not talented. And funny thing is, is part of the reason that a person is successful is because the things that are required of their job, they're able to pick them up. They're willing to do the work. They have the competency uh, or the competence, rather, and the and the wherewithal and the ability or whatever the intrinsic needs are of that function or position or thing, they have that. Uh, I used to tell my wife all the time about my career. I said, you know, I'm so lucky that we're able to retire at uh, 51 and so on. And she says, you're not lucky. You worked your ass off in order to get here. And you had to put up with a lot of crap in order to get here. And you had to deal with a lot of people that used you to push their agendas in order to get here. You lost a lot of people along the way in order to get here. You made a lot of sacrifices to get here. And I agree, but it just that doesn't that's not the way that I see it. And I, it's it's part of that imposter syndrome. It's and it's it's not uncommon. Um, it's it's very well documented. I, I would suggest. Uh, anybody, uh, I'd suggest all of you to, to take a look at some of the literature around imposter syndrome. It's a real thing. It happens to most people. In fact, if you if you look at a lot of CEOs, a lot of CEOs that appear to have these big egos, it's not big egos. It's insecurity, and it's not insecurity about their skills or their knowledge or their abilities. It's the imposter syndrome. It's a real thing, and so you know, and 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 the problem is it's uh it causes you sometimes or it caused me to feel out of place in in some of these new circles and and I, it's funny because i one time i was at a uh i had the opportunity to go to an event and i'm at the event and there's all these really important people i i guess they're important people i mean you know 
people with big names and titles that are famous are important. And so there's all these important people in there. And I'm just hanging out. And I, I went with uh, one of my colleagues who's actually the hospital president. And I went because, I, number one, I enjoyed spending time with him. I still enjoy it. He's He's just a great human being. Um, and there was free wine and there were free snacks. So I said, you know, after work, free wine, free snacks. So it was like a free happy hour with a cool guy just in, in, San, in, in, in San Francisco. So I go to this thing. Then all of a sudden, true story, Nancy Pelosi walks in. Nancy Pelosi, the ex-speaker of the House, walks in. And so, of course, everybody is kissing the booty. Everybody's trying to get pictures with her. Everybody's trying to get five minutes with her. Everybody's trying to make sure that they know, that she knows who they are. You know, it was all of the, um, I call it networking stuff, to be nice. And, you know, everybody was around her. And so I'm just standing in the back, just looking around, saying, that's pretty cool. Because I, I always think it's cool to see people on TV in person or see people in person that I've seen on TV. So I guess I should talk to myself because sometimes I know some of us watch me on TV. And so if I talk to myself, then I'd always have somebody that's on TV that I could talk to. Just kidding. I know it's a bad joke. But no, so she's in there and I'm standing in the back just hanging out, drinking wine. I probably had three glasses of wine by this time, eating some snacks, and the snacks were pretty good. So she walks over to me, sticks out her hand and says, hi, my name's Nancy. I was like, what? I said, how you doing? And, you know, we, I introduced myself and we ended up talking for about five to 10 minutes. And she, kept, she asked me, would you like to take a picture with me? I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'll take a picture of anybody. You want to take a picture? Let's take a picture. So I go over and take a picture with her. And while we're taking a the picture, there's all these other people trying to stick their heads in and so on. And just to just to be part of that picture. And, you know, her handlers, I guess, or her people or other people around who they were move people out. But we ended up taking a picture. But what was funny is then she gave a little bit of a speech. And some of what we talked about in the in that conversation, she used she referenced in the speech. She's like, yeah, I was talking to so and so. And this is we were talking about this. And I'm like, whoa, this is. This is incredible. And it's and it's funny because I you know, again, I, I'm not we're not here to talk politics, whether you're Democrat, Republican. I would just say that Nancy Pelosi is an important person in our society and has been an important person in our society. And for her to just walk up, extend herself, and want to have a conversation and get to know me out of all of these other important people in the room, I thought that was pretty cool. And but that's because she saw that I belonged. She saw that I was somebody that she didn't know that she wanted to know. She saw that I was somebody that wanted to be there. And, and this is me saying, you know, I'm just lucky to be here. But, you know, as my wife would say, you're not lucky. You're supposed to be there. And, uh, you know, it's easy for me to process that, you know, the universe coalesces around the right idea, so on and so forth. But I'll tell you what, you will not see Sabado for president. You will not see Sabado for House of Representatives. You will not see Sabado for state or local government. Because I don't want that many people in my business unless I'm putting it on my channel. So, uh, but it's it's cool. But the the challenge is, is it, it can be the, the imposter syndrome. It, it, it could be crippling. And I had to remind myself that it was, and I continue to do it, that my hard work is what got me here and that everything I'm getting, I deserve it. Not because I'm entitled to it, but because I worked my ass off to get it. So I worked hard to get here. And so I deserve it. Um, the next one that I want to talk about is there's there's a sense of guilt. And, and specifically, and I, and I think about this a lot, is there's a lot of people that I used to used to run with. And I, my best friend, one of the reasons that I love my best friend so much is that he really revels in, in, in my success. Um, but there's others that were left behind. And sometimes people's egos will not allow them to be happy for you. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where people are just not happy for us. And they're not unhappy for us. They're just not happy for us. And they're not happy for us because sometimes because we're doing something that they're not. Sometimes they wish it was them. Sometimes they relate back to their circumstances. I had a friend of mine 
that I was talking to, and I think I talk about this in a video, but he said, it, we we're talking about something, and then he started asking me about my parents. I told him what my parents did and who they were and that they were together for 49 and a half years until my father passed away. And he said, there are people out there, and this is what he told me. He says, there are people out there that will resent you because of that. Um, and so as you start to grow and you start to develop, you have to realize that people, there's, there's two types of people that you know. There's people that are in your corner and there's people that aren't in your corner. And if they're in your corner, great, because they're ride or dies. They're gonna be people that that love the fact that you're doing something. It's, I have friends that are um, that are public figures. And what's cool about it is I'm happy that they're doing something cool. Like I always said, I used to tell my friends back in the day when they got a nice car, I told them, I think it's cool to have a nice car. The only thing I want is I want to take a ride in it. Can, can, I, can I take a ride in your car with you? Or can I drive it? That type of thing. But it was never hating on them or any of that. And I'm not saying that people are hating on you, but there's a guilt when you come to that point that you have to let people go. Because if they're, if they're not on your team, then they're holding you by the ankles and they're kind of holding you back. And it's, that's a tough, that's a tough real, uh, re, uh, realization to have to make. It's hard to deal with because you, if, if you're like me, you only invest your time and your emotion and your vulnerability into people that you really care about. And so sometimes to have to leave those folks behind, that's a tough situation. But unfortunately, Again, in my mind, if I don't continue moving forward, then I may fall all the way back. And if I fall all the way back, then I have to start over again and I'm in a bad situation. Then I'm no good to anybody. Um, and the thing is, is it's 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 like you just you feel like you're leaving them behind and you, you feel like you're not. You know, we talk about a lot about keeping it real and we feel like we're not keeping it real. And. You know, I, I think it's funny. I, you know, I really like Dave Chappelle. Um, I, I do think he's the GOAT. And um, I think, and, and tell me what you think, but I, I think Dave Chappelle is like Richard Pryor, where he talks about real life experiences, about uh, a, host of, a host of topics that are somewhat controversial, but on people's mind need to be talked about. And I think people in a lot of cases are afraid to talk about them. But, you know, you want to keep it real. But he also had this one skit when keeping it real goes wrong. And I'm not going to advertise. For the Chappelle show after what uh, what they did to him on that show, although I think Netflix did do a nice job of giving him back his show and, and having him get credit for the work that he did. But you, you, you sometimes start to feel like, you know, you're abandoning your roots. And, and that's the way I felt. It's because I go back and I talk to people that I that I used to know. And it just doesn't feel right because I could I could sense that resentment in terms of. You, know, you left us behind and, and I felt and I feel bad that I left them behind. So maybe it's not even them. Maybe it's me. Maybe I feel bad that I left them behind and I have to constantly remind myself how difficult. I mean, I had to deal with a lot of stuff and it's I'm not going to go into that because it's not the, this, this isn't the channel for that. But I had to deal with a lot of stuff uh, to get to where I am. Um, and again, it's it's I had to deal with racism. I had to deal with discrimination. I had to deal with people making comments. Um, to me because of who I was, the color of my skin and all that. So I know there's going to be people out there that are like, oh, well, you know, race doesn't matter. Bullshit. It does. And it comes out. And I'm not saying it, it's it's the end all be all for everything in terms of our ability to become successful. But there's an impact to that. And so I don't I don't hold on to that feeling of abandoning my roots so much because yeah, I moved ahead, but I had to do a lot. And so now I try to give back in, in a bunch of ways and in, in ways that I in ways that I can. But I but I do think it's essential to stay as connected to your past as you can be and recognize that it's okay to grow and evolve. I I've come to realize that it's it's really okay to to grow. If you if you stay in the same place your whole life, um, then you're actually falling backwards because they say the only constant is change. And so you're either there's no and so there's no such thing as standing still. So you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards, and and you have to come to terms with yourself that that's okay, and not feel as much of that guilt. You know, and it's great to help others, but but don't feel 
guilty uh, for your success. Um, another another key one is that relationships change as you as you continue to move towards success. Uh, people start to see you differently. I, I had a guy once tell me. I said, you know, what did I tell him? I said, uh, he's. We we're talking about something, and I said, you know, I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from nine to five. Hey, hell, I paid a price. And he said to me, you're not average. And at first, I didn't know how to take that because I thought he was calling me weird. But that's not what he was saying. What he was saying was, is the stuff that you're doing isn't as common as the stuff that you, that you, that you, that you think. And it's it's funny because you get people that start to envy your 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 uh, your success. Again, there's people that look at my relationships with my or not my relationships, but my upbringing, and they wish they had it, and because they didn't. You know, they envy me. They're they're frustrated with me about that, and um, or they expect me to now that I've uh, now that I've become successful, I'm now obligated somehow to do something for them. And I'm always I've always been a big fan of if I vouch for you, you have to be prepared for me to vouch for you. You know, I I think it, I've heard that uh, the statement, or I use the statement that um, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And if you prepare yourself and you're ready for that job and you've worked hard and you've done a good job up to that point, sure, I'm going to refer you. But just on general principle, I'm just not going to do that. But a lot of people would expect you to do that because they say, well, we grew up together. Yeah, but you didn't do these things to prepare. So when you, if I, if I, if I uh, refer you and you're not prepared, then that's going to impact all of us in a, in a negative way. And there's some friends that have that have distanced myself, and um, I've I've uh, I've had some friends that I've had to distance myself from because part of the part of the journey of becoming successful, it's not just making more money, it's not just getting the right job, it's not just living in the right neighborhood with the right house, but a lot of it is psychological, a lot of it is mental, and there are things that people do that were fine at one point in your life. But aren't fine now. Um, I have I have friends that at, at points in their lives, like I had one friend that was always had some hustle in them, always had some hustle, and there was things weren't always what they seemed. So if if something was communicated, it was it it was any time it was communicated, there was always more to the story, which was okay at a certain point in my life. But I can't have that now. And so I had to distance myself from them. And there's other people that have distanced themselves from me. And, and I'm okay with that. I, uh, you know, I, I have to, I've, I've come to terms with the fact that my circle, I, I, I'm only going to put people in, in, in the circle, in my circle, that get me, that I get, that, that have a respect for me that there's love for. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going around telling everybody I love them. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm not wired that way. But the people that are in my circle know that I care about them deeply and I love them deeply and they love me deeply. It's and it's and I see it in different ways and different people may show it in different ways and do different things. But I don't think if uh, you go and you ask any of my friends, they might say a whole bunch of things about me. And some of them may be, you know, questionable, but they all know that I care deeply about them and and I spend time with them. So but. There's some that I was cool with, but I just had to I had to let them go. And there's some that were I was cool with that had to let me go. And and I'll tell you these shifts, they're tough to navigate. Um, and so it's it's really important to uh, to set boundaries and communicate openly. And uh, one of the things that I've done uh, as I hit my retirement is I've told myself that instead of just kind of moving away and saying, okay, I'm, we're, we're over is I, I try to communicate more and have those conversations and, and really try to build, uh, those, those friendships. The, uh, the, the last one I want to talk about is one of the things I deal with is, and I, and I think I talked about a little bit early is this, is this fear of losing it all, the sphere of, I'm going to go back. Um, you know, I've, I, I came from the hood. I've done well for myself. I've put money away. I've made some good decisions, and 
I've done all of the right things. And so what I don't want to do is I don't want to go back. And, and it absolutely terrifies me of the fact that I could be two or three decisions away. Now, whether or not that's actually the reality of the situation, I don't know. Because 80% of the world is how you deal with it and, and how you internalize the stimuli that you have on the outside. Um, and only 20% is what, what actually happens. And so is, it, is there really a likelihood or a chance that happens? Probably not. But it doesn't take away that fear. It's almost like if, for those of you that are old enough um, to want to remember the Flintstones, and I don't know if they show them on, on Cartoon Network or not. So if you, if the Flintstones are being on, shown on Cartoon Network or something like that, let me know in the comments because I think, uh, you know, I, I'll make sure I, I, ha I lock that in as reference for, for future videos. But it's I, I get terrified of, of as as they say hustling backwards and I and I try not to try not to hustle backwards, and you know there there were times when things would happen and they'd keep me up at night, and I you know I'd obsess over all of my financial decisions you know I don't want to buy this I don't want to buy that I don't want to buy this, um, even to the fact that when I was looking for a microphone I was thinking I, I want to get a certain type of microphone and I looked on Amazon and saw how much it costs and I said you know I don't know if I want to do that because I'm afraid that if I spend this then it's going to impact this and the reality is it doesn't make a difference you know it doesn't make a difference because it's not that much money it's all paid off anyway so it's 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 done I'm not I'm not you know it's not I'm not looking at hundred million dollar microphones that I got to pay off in payments you know, I'm not the guy that goes out and buys a Lamborghini on, on credit and pays payments on it. I'm, I'm just not that guy. So it's not going to be something that... And I'm, and I'm a fairly conservative person uh, in my dealings. I don't make a lot of rash decisions. And I don't, I'm, I'm very thoughtful and discerning in, in how I move forward with just about all the components of my life. And my wife is the same way. And so in order for me to lose it all, it would really take a lot. But... It's uh, it, but I, but for a long time I had a really unhealthy relationship with money. I was, uh, it was a matter of let me go out and get what I can now because there's a chance that I don't get it, but I don't want to spend too much because then I may end up in the poorhouse. And so, you know, but uh, but again, so while while it's natural, you know, uh, to try to protect what you earn, and I'm not saying that you don't protect it. Um, you know, I learned that I have to remember that my worth isn't tied to my bank account. Who Sabado is, the reason that I have 300 subscribers in four months uh, on this channel is not because of my bank account. It's because uh, the stuff that I'm experiencing, the stuff that I'm speaking to resonates with some of you. And, it's, and, and I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't my own experience. And so the, my value to you has nothing to do with, with money. Um, and my value to myself and it, it takes time you, you have to get yourself to a point where you where you realize that because otherwise you drive yourself crazy and, and you gain the success but then you're driving yourself nuts because you don't know if you can hold on to it and so then you have to ask yourself are you really successful if you do that um, and so you know and it's 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 but if you find peace and fulfillment then you've got the answer because there's there's a lot of people you know I, one of the things that I, I'll tell you one of the people that I really admire from this perspective is uh, Shaquille O'Neal and again I'm not advertising for the Shaquille O'Neal brand or any of that but I I, I think you got to give credit where credit is due um, I've been really paying a lot of attention to Shaquille O'Neal and his story lately and and how he got from where he uh, where he came from to where he is the lessons that were instilled in him by Phil, his father, uh, because his biological didn't bother. And, um, you know, really paying attention to, to what he thinks. And, and when you look at Shaq, you know, Shaq knows that he's rich. Shaq knows that he was successful. Shaq knows that he's famous. But Shaq also said, I want to make sure I do things that fulfill me. I want to make sure that I go back to school and get my Ph.D., because I promised my mom and I want to make sure that I follow through on what I told my mom. I want to make sure that I always try to do what I can to help kids because that's important to me. And it's it would be easy for him to put himself in a bubble and not do anything, but he doesn't do that. And he, he focuses on what helps him find peace and helps find fulfillment. So, I mean, I'm sure he's got challenges in his life. But I don't know. 
he seems like a fairly peaceful cat to me, and he seems to be pretty fulfilled because he's doing the things that he wants to do and having fun doing them. And so, you know, so I, I so just make sure. And I, and I found that by doing that, I worry less about some things, and I, I actually find myself not worrying about too much uh, because I'm I'm in a I'm in a good place because I was able to 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 figure that piece out. So you know, so again, I I think that you know. Overall, um, you know, success, you know, it's a journey, not a destination. There's no, there's never a place where you just find success and you get there. And there's going to be ups and downs and you're going to have to uh, deal with a bunch of stuff, you know, especially when you start from a place of, of struggle, you know, when you, when you come from a place where you didn't have any, any dough. But remember, you know, you're not alone in feeling those things. I, um, it's okay to acknowledge them. You know, I spend a lot of time thinking about, um, I spend a lot of time thinking about kind of my path and how did I get here? And it's it's okay to acknowledge that there's 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 these challenges. It's, it's okay. And sometimes you find yourself in situations where you you seek out other people to talk to about it. Um, and it's and and the, so the key is, is is really how you navigate through them. Um, and find balance. I, I think if there's anything that you take away from this video is let's let's for a moment forget money and focus on balance. Let's just try to find balance in our lives. Let's just try to, you know, <clears throat> figure out how we live balanced lives and we keep it real to ourselves and, and, and stay our true selves. And, and understand that different people, exp uh, you know, experience uh, success differently. But you have to be ready to experience and, and accept uh, the changes that you have as you as you grow, as you become a new person. You know, people say, "Well, you're not the same person I knew ten years ago," and it's like good because ten years ago I was another person. I, I I've grown since then because if you you know we all look at the uh, it's, there's always a joke of the of the guy with the leather jacket and the mullet that's still stuck in the '80s because he peaked out in high school. You never want to be that person or the proverbial that guy. So, uh, so if you if you uh, so I, so I, so I, I, I so I have a challenge for for you. So you know if you face any of these challenges, you know drop a comment in the in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear your story and maybe I'd I'll share it on the channel and and, and talk about it and 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 you know just don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and. Uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss uh, any more deep dives into um, into you know additional content, particularly around success and, and so on. So um, again, it's your main man Sabado. I'm going to sign out, but uh, you know have a great day, and uh, I will talk to you soon.